Starting from symmetry 4, this is the plane net. Of course, I know that there is extra two-fold symmetry in here, but basically the highest symmetry is four-fold. So we have to preserve this four-fold rotation axis so when you put next level of a plane net on top of that. So four-fold rotation axis, position is zero, zero, and half, half in the two-dimensional cases. So displacement vector T3 can be located can locate it at 0, 0, G position and half, half, and G positions. So first we put, define the T3 vector at 0, 0, G. Then this is the new crystal system that is defined. In this case, T1 vector and T2 vector, the magnitude should be the same, and each axis uh, all is perpendicular to each other. So this is tetragonal crystal system. Tetragonal crystal system is developed from fourfold, at least one fourfold rotational symmetries. And when you define the unicell like this, then of course there is only one lattice point in a unicell. So this is primitive tetragonal rubber lattice. Okay, so one crystal system called tetragonal crystal system is developed starting from fourfold rotational symmetry. And there's one primitive tetragonal probabilities is developed. When I put T3 vector at half half G position, then I can put one tetragonal, one plane net, and another plane net like this, and I can define T3 vector like this. And in this case, again, T3 vector is inclined from T1 vector and T2 vector. So it lost the information of the symmetries. So instead of doing that, I put another one on top of that. Okay, like this. Then now this is the same as this. So I can put T3 vectors perpendicular to T1 vector and T2 vectors, which is basically tetragonal crystal system. Starting, it has the information of at least one fourfold rotational symmetry. So there is one extra probability is developed. This is body centered tetragonal probability. There are, so there are 4P and 4I, primitive tetragonal probabilities, body-centered tetragonal probabilities, all belongs to tetragonal crystal system. Basically, it has the information of at least one fourfold rotational symmetry. Now, if I start from symmetry three, three locations for threefold axis, one is zero, zero, for instance, this is 0, 0, and this one is 2 thirds and 1 third, then this is 1 third and 2 thirds. It depends on how you define your axis. So if I preserve this threefold system, then I can put the, I can define T3 vector at 0, 0, G, put it directly on top of that. Then this is T1 vector, and this is T2 vector, and this is T3 vectors. Now this angle, in this case 120 degrees, and T1 vector, T2 vector should have the same, this one back, this vector, this vector should be the same size, same magnitude. Now the uh, T3 vector has 90 degree angle uh, uh, with the T1 vector and T3 vector. So new crystal system is defined. Now this one, I call it 3P, and 3 is basically, now this unicell shape, it's basically the same as a hexagonal crystal system, but it's starting from uh, threefold information. But the unicell shape is the same as a hexagonal crystal system, which I will explain um, later. So we can call it primitive hexagonal probabilities, even though it starts from threefold systems. Now, if I put the T3 vectors at this position, for instance, if I put one unicell in here, put another one on here, next level. Then, of course, this vector looks like this. Then again, this vector, the same thing, should look like this. So this is another net that we define this zero level, first level, second level, plain net. Okay? Whenever you put one next level in here, this level just follows. 
because the translation vector moves from here to here to here to here. Okay, so in this case, how I can define this, uh, this uh, crystal systems? Uh, basically, starting from threefold, hexagonal crystal system is something that we can define it. But in this case, I can define the T3 vector as perpendicular. Okay, so instead of doing that, uh, in the case of threefold systems, what we're doing is I define this first level in here, and the second level is in here, so it goes here and here, here, here. So a little bit complicated, but uh, you can think about, let's say, mm, one threefold, this is A position. Now, this is the B position of the next level. Okay, this lattice point is at the B positions. And this next level is at the C positions. So A, B, C, now it goes to A again. Then, when you define the unicell, I define the unicell like this. Okay, you have to follow me, this is a little bit complicated. So this B position is the same as B position in here. Uh, B position is here and B position is here. Now this C position is the same as the position in here and here. Okay, so this is A position. Now this is the B position and this is C position. So in this case, we developed a new crystal system having one A axis goes to T1 vector to all the B positions in here. So this one called as T1 vector and T2 vector and T3 vectors. Then the next level is going to here, to C positions. Okay, the next level goes to the C positions like this. Okay, so this is C position. So, and this is the B position. So along this A position, there are one uh, lattice point. B position has three lattice points. And C position has three points on top of that. The next level has A positions. So if I define uh, the lattice vectors from A point to B point, okay, this three axis, T1 vector, T2 vector, and T3 vector, can have the same magnitude, arbitrary numbers, but it should be the same size. And the angles between uh, these three axes, alpha, beta, gamma, should be the same. Okay, so three axes, same magnitude, can have any arbitrary numbers, but this one should have the same angles. Then the next level has the same threes, and then it goes to A positions. So new totally new crystal system is defined by defining T1 beta, T2 beta, T3 beta like that. So in this case, we call 3R. If we define the unicell like this, this is what we call rhombohedral crystal system. Rhombohedral crystal system, and there is one lattice point, so there is a primitive rhombohedral, there is only one probability in the case of rhomboidal crystal system, which is 3R. So starting from threefold, we can develop two different crystal systems. One is a hexagonal crystal system, where T3 axis is perpendicular. And one is a rhomboidal crystal system, where T1 vector, T2 vector, T3 vector has the same size, and the angle of alpha, beta, gamma should be the same angles. Then depending on where I put the G positions, it can be elongated and shrink down and the uh, angle, but angle should be the same. So this is rhombohedral crystal system. There is primitive rhombohedral probabilities, only one probabilities. And there is hexagonal crystal system. There is a primitive hexagonal crystal system, which is defined by C4. Uh, Okay, when I start from symmetry 6, remember that there is a 3-fold in here and there is 2-fold in here in the plane net.
But when you select another level and put it directly on top of that, the highest symmetry in this case is sixfold. So there is only one position that you can put the next level, which is directly on top of that. The sixfold location exists at 0, 0. So displacement vector T3 should be at 0, 0, G. So what kinds of crystal system you develop? That's the same thing that we developed already. In this case, there is lattice points in here. And this T1 vector, T2 vector, T1 vector, T2 vector has the same size. This is 120 degree angles. Now this is T3 vector, can have any arbitrary uh, numbers. But this one is perpendicular, and this one is 120, uh, this one is 60 degree in here. And there is only one lattice point in a unicell. This is the crystal system which is developed uh, starting from threefold symmetry, which is hexagonal crystal systems. And there is one lattice point in a unicell, so this is primitive hexagonal Brava lattice. So starting from threefold, we can develop hexagonal crystal system. Starting from sixfold, we can develop hexagonal crystal system, even though the symmetry elements around each lattice point is now different. Either it can have threefold or sixfold. So it is the same hexagonal crystal system. So hexagonal crystal system, when you say that, this is basically showing the unicell shapes, the relationship between three uh, lattice vectors of T1 vector, T2 vector, T3 vector, the magnitude of that, and angle of that. In that respect, hexagonal system can have both threefold and sixfold. But in the threefold, we can develop extra crystal system, which is rhomboidal, and there is only one Brava lattice, only one lattice point in a uh, rhomboidal crystal system. You follow me? Okay. Now, uh, extra crystal system can develop, which we start from symmetry 2-3. Remember that in the last lecture, uh, when we have multi-rotational systems, there is 2-3-3 or 4-3-2 three, three, that belongs to the cubic symmetry elements. So this is cubic symmetry, which is 2-3 symmetry. And this cubic symmetry is not associated, even though we said cubic, so we start from cubic crystal systems when, you, when we define this uh, multi-rotational symmetry, x-axis, y-axis, g-axis, and there is 1, 1, 1 axis. There is 4, 1, 1, 1 axis that we defined that this one has all threefold symmetry. Starting from this multi-rotational symmetry, then we can develop extra crystal system, which is cubic crystal system. And the cubic crystal system, the definition of that is not from the fourfold symmetry. All the cubic crystal system has four threefold rotational axis. So that starts from multi-rotation systems of two, three, and from that symmetry, we develop the new crystal system, which is the cubic crystal system. Now, in this case, when this alpha, beta, gamma, A equal to B equal to C, and alpha, beta, gamma is 90 degree, okay, in this case, there is only one lattice point in a unicell. This is one threefold. So in this case, all the 1, 1, and axis can have threefold symmetry elements, four threefold symmetry elements. So this is what we call primitive cubic Brava lattice, 2, 3, P. So one Brava lattice is developed from the cubic symmetry. Remember that uh, this cubic symmetry has four threefold rotational elements. But when you're looking at one, 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 one axis, it has one threefold systems. So this one looks like it's the same as rhombohedral crystal system along the A plane, B plane, C plane to A plane. In one axis, there is threefold symmetry. But when you have this rhombohedral crystal system, then you either 
shrink down or expand, then all this angle, even though that angle alpha is the same, can have any arbitrary angles. But when you have this angle alpha, when you expand or shrink down, is matched with 90 degrees, then extra threefold is developed. So now it belongs to cubic crystal system. So you start from rhomboidal crystal system, one threefold, and you expand and shrink down. Then when this angle of rhomboidal crystal system is 90 degree, then extra threefold is developed. So it belongs to cubic crystal system. When this angle alpha is 90 degree, there is only one lattice point in a unicell. So this is what we call primitive cubic probabilities. Now, by the same token, when this rhomboidal crystal system, this angle is 60 degree, then again, extra threefold is developed. Extra, you know, three, threefold system is developed, so the unicell now has four threefold symmetry elements. That's different between rhomboidal. Rhomboidal has only one threefold. So, cubic crystal system is defined, but in this case, when this angle is 60 degree, now if we define the cubic crystal system like this, in order to preserve the basic symmetry elements of this, it has four threefold system. Then we define the unicell as a cubic shape to preserve the symmetry information. Then extra lattice point is located at the center of each faces. Okay, so this one is, has four lattice points in a unicell, or the center of the faces. So this is what we call 2, 3, F. 2, 3 is cubic crystal system. F is face-centered cubic bravo lattice. So this is what we call face-centered cubic bravo lattice. In this case, this one is a special type of rhomboidal crystal system and the angle is 60 degree, then instead of defining it as rhomboidal, now because it has four threefold symmetry developed, so it's now become the cubic crystal system. And when you define the unicell as a cubic crystal system, then you find out that there are four lattice points in a unicell, extra lattice points in the center of the, all the faces, so face-centered cubic bravo lattice is developed. Now again, by the same token when you're doing it, when this angle of rhomboidal crystal system is now 109 degrees, again, extra threefold is developed. In this case, when you define the unicell as a cubic crystal system like this, then extra lattice point locates at the center of this unicell. So this is what we call body-centered cubic Bravo lattice. Another, again, cubic crystal system, but this one has two lattice points in a unicell. Corner of the unicell, there's a lattice point, and the body center positions, there's extra lattice points, which we call body centered cubic bravo lattices. Okay, so it's a little bit not that easy to look at these unicell shapes, but if you see more carefully, then you can define uh, where all this A1, A2, A3 uh, axis is located like this if you define it as one lattice point in a unicell. But if you define the unicell in this manner as belongs to cubic crystal system, then you see that there is extra lattice points in body center position. All right, so again, uh, in a lattice system, there is a rhomboidal, one threefold, hexagonal can be developed as threefold and six-fold. So unicell shape-wise, lattice system-wise, we call it rhomboidal and hexagonal is basically can be developed either from uh, three-fold symmetry and six-fold symmetry. But in the crystal system, there is another way to define it. If you define your unicell starting from three-fold, then that's what we call trigonal. So hexagonal with this one three-fold and rhomboidal is defined as trigonal crystal system for some people who are rhomboidal when you consider the lattice type of unicells. And hexagonal is 
the unicell is have the six-fold symmetry, then this is what some people call hexagonal crystal system. Okay. So there is a little bit uh, different definitions of looking at it. So I hope you are not confusing it. In a sense of unicell shapes, it can be hexagonal crystal system, can have both threefold and sixfold. That's a hexagonal crystal system. But in the, uh, when you just consider this threefold, sixfold difference, threefold can have rhomboidal crystal system and hexagonal crystal system all belongs to trigonal systems. And if this unicell has sixfold, then that's what people call hexagonal crystal systems. Summary wise, again, I explained to you this part, plane lattice type, where you started, parallelogram, one-fold, two-fold, and rectangular, a diamond, square type, four-fold, hexagonal type can be developed as, from three-fold and can be developed from six-fold. And there is a, this, uh, this one is a square, but this one is a special type of rhomboidal. And this one is triclinic crystal system, monoclinic crystal system, orthorhombic crystal system, tetragonal crystal system. 3R is rhomboidal crystal system. 3P, 6P, the same thing. This is hexagonal crystal system. And 2, 3, this is cubic crystal system. So I defined triclinic, monoclinic, orthorhombic, tetragonal, rhomboidal, hexagonal, cubic. This one is seven crystal system. But when we define it, there's more than one lattice points in a unicell. This is 1P, primitive, triclinic, probe lattice. 2P, primitive, monoclinic, body-centered, monoclinic, probe lattice. 222 can have four different probe lattices, primitive, body-centered, a phase centered and all the phase centered. Fourfold tetragonal crystal system has primitive tetragonal probabilities and body centered tetragonal probabilities, rhomboidal, hexagonal, and the cubic crystal system has primitive cubic, body centered cubic, phase centered cubic. If you count this, then you can find out that there are 14 probabilities. which belongs to seven crystal system. Okay, so this is the end of this part of the lecture. I systematically defined seven crystal system and 14 Brabel lattices. Remember that symmetry is the most important part for the derivation of these seven crystal systems and 14 Brabel lattices. So we want to define the unicell and when you define the unicell, by the translation of this unicell, all the crystal structure can be defined. But when you define the unicell shapes, then symmetry is the basic ingredients of how we can systematically define these seven crystal systems. And in doing that, there are more than one lattice points in a unicell. So that's what we call 14 Brabar lattices. Okay, this is the end of the lecture. Thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Bye.